Good evening, guys. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with every single person. God bless you guys. Today we will talk about the subject hell. Is it real? Is it imaginary? Who is going there? How can we prevent from going there? But today we will find the truth in the name of Jesus by the revealed of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, powerful and ever-living God, thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching us and giving us the truth, everything that is revealed by you in the name of Jesus. Biblical scriptures, they all prove the truth in the name of Jesus, by the word of God that is in us in the name of Jesus, so we can understand the truth and teach things to the non-believers in the name of Jesus. For God, you only have the power to do everything in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible for you. In the name of Jesus, let the word of God be through your will, not mine, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, today, we we're talking about hell, and we need to figure out something about hell. The first thing, we will go to the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 8. But as for the cowardly, faithless, detestable for the murderers, and the sexual, immortal, sorcerers, idiotrias, and liars, their portion will be in the lake of that burns with fire and sulfur, which is a second death. Matthew 10, 28, do not fear those who kill the body but kill the soul cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can de uh, destroy both body and soul in hell Matthew 25 46 and those will go away in eternal punishment but the righteousness going to eternal life Revelations 20 10 and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire sulfur was the beast and the false prophet and were tormented night and day forever and ever Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Lord, Lord our God. Lord, Christ Jesus Lord, our God. Revelations 20.15 says, If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. Matthew 25.41 then he will then he will say to those on left, Depart from me, you curse the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Matthew 5.22 But I say to you that everyone who is angry at his brother and liable to judgment, whoever insults his brother will liable to counsel, but whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. Revelations 14.11 And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night. And they worship the beast and his image, whoever receives the mark of the name. 2 Thessalonians 1 9. They will suffer punishment and eternal destruction from the presence of the Lord, our glory and the mighty. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 13 50. And throw them in the fairly furnace in their place, and there will weeping and garnishing of teeth. 2 Peter 2 4. For if God did not spare the angels, they sin, but cast them into hell and condemned them in chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until judgment day. Judah 1 7 says, Just as Sam and Gomorrah is so surrounding cities, which likewise indulge sexual immortals, pursuing unnatural desires, served as an example of undergoing a punishment of eternal life. And now we'll learn what God has done for us in the name of Jesus. John 3, chapter 3, 16, 18 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son. Whoever believes in him will not per perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world may be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. Whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Revelations 20.14 says, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, the second death, the lake of fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mark 9, 43, 48 says, If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If it is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Better to enter life lame with two feet to be thrown in hell. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. Because to you, entering the kingdom of God with one eye, is better than two eyes thrown in hell. Where there worms does not die, the worms do not die, and the fire never quenches. Amen. Hallelujah. See how scary it is? There is a real hell in the name of Jesus. The ones that don't believe it in the name of Jesus. 
will be perished forever. God is the only one that can make your decision to save you. In the name of Jesus. Luke 12, 5 says, But I, I will wonder to whom to fear. Fear him who has killed the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Fear God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. God is merciful, Father, in the name of Jesus, and He helps us in every single way, in the name of Jesus. So we're learning that hell, and also there's a name for hell in Hebrew, in Proverbs 15, 24, is that the path of life leads upward to prudent, and He may turn away from Shielo, Shielo beneath. So Shielo is another word for hell. Also, the lake of fire is another word for hell, in the name of Jesus. It's because God is like this. Here's a, here's a beautiful one. Matthew 13, 41, 42. The Son of Man will send His angels and they will gather out of the kingdom all cause of sin and law breakers. Throw them into the fiery furnace and place them where they are weeping and garnished teeth. This is a very important thing because God is saying here, the ones who break the law, the law of God is the commandments. So if you're not respecting the law, you might be going to hell. If you don't have God in your life, you're going to hell. Now Matthew 7, 13, 14 says, Enter the narrow gate. By the gate is wide and way, and is easy to lead to destruction. For those who enter are many, but the gate is narrow, and the way is hard to lead to life. Those who find it are few. Meaning, a lot of people will die. A lot of people will suffer. Because they can't find the salvation of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we need to figure out why is all this happening. Why is the coronavirus is happening? Why are these things happening? Why are we part of this? And here's the most important one. Revelation 20, 13, 15. It says, In the sea gave up the dead and they were thrown in. Death and Hades gave up the dead and they were them. And they were judged one of them according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This second death, the lake of fire, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. So if you're not in the book of life, you're going to hell. Alright, so everything, these are the scriptures in the name of Jesus that will teach you if hell is real. And the answer is absolutely is hell real. Here's a beautiful one. James 3.6 3, 3, 6 says, And the tongue is a fire of the world. Of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among a member, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. In the name of Jesus. See, God in this hour, He is trying to give you the hour. John 5 28 29 says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when those and the tombs will hear the voice of coming out, and those who have done the resurrection of life will have no done evil to resurrection of judgment. You know what that means? That's the rapture in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So is hell real? Let's start it. Hell is absolutely real in the name of Jesus. The ones that are going to hell are cowards, the faithless, the hateful, the murderers, the perverts, the act of sexuality, and um, sorcerers, wizards, people who live in, believe in witchcraft, idol trees, the ones that believe in worshiping idols and they bow down to them. People who worship idols, liars, the ones that don't forgive, the ones that insult their brothers and do not love, the ones that don't love each other, the ones who worship Satan, idol, the world, and the desire of the world, the ones who worship the image, the beast, and the antichrist, those who break the commandments of God, false prophets, false Christ, fake pastors, fake preachers, those who know the truth of God and are saved, but they go back into the world, in the name of Jesus. So Revelations 2.11, we're going to read. And it says, He who has an ear, let him hear. When the Spirit says to the churches, He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. In the name of Jesus. God is telling now by the Holy Spirit, telling every single person, there is a hell. It's not imaginary. It's not invented. The Jehovah Witnesses are people in the world that believe that there's no hell. And they say that Jesus is, um, is love and everything. But in the Word of God, He is he's a consumer of fire. Meaning, He punishes. He punishes the wicked. Do you think that the wicked are going to go to heaven? So if you steal, if you kill, and if you do all these bad things, you're, you're, God's going to say, yeah, sure, go, go to heaven. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on down. Kill as many people and you're going to go to heaven. No, that's not the way it works. There is a hell and they're going there. 
if you don't believe in God, the Word of God teaches us in the name of Jesus. There's called um, a human, uh, in world, like a molder, immoral spirit in the name of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, and we will find it right now in the name of Jesus. It talks about a spirit that if, if you don't have God in your life, let's just put it like you don't have God in your life, but you keep doing bad things. It's called the unclean spirit that returns. When an unclean spirit comes out of a man, he goes through a dry place seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds an empty sweep and put in order. Then he goes and takes up him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter dwell there in the last state of man worse than the first so it shall be said that the wicked generation so what does this really mean it means if you don't have god which is the the strength the, the salvation the rock that if i rebuke your spirit or I, I say in the name of jesus let's pray for this person but they don't have god the devil goes away then he does a 360 he finds seven more spirits and says, hey, come on, let's go have a party. We're going to go in this human being. And they go in the human being and they, the person becomes worse. So the person becomes disease. This person from sin starts becoming evil, hatred, wicked, and becomes closer to Satan than God in the name of Jesus. This is what God is telling us. See, hell is a place with sulfur and fire where fire will quench and never burn it's going to keep burning and burning and burning there's no stop to the burn it's going to be night and day it's all eternal all eternity excuse me if you're not found in the book of life which the book of life is the book of jesus christ the book of salvation the eternal world how are you going to find there you have to find yourself knowing jesus knowing god knowing the ten com excuse me knowing the commandments and knowing the holy spirit the ones that have the key of death in Hades is God. God has the ultimate key because he died on the cross and resurrected. That's why we have salvation in the name of Jesus. The ones who believe it. We may have salvation because we know that God's there, but we need to express it. We need to confess it. We need to humiliate. We need to glorify it. Many, many of them will not be saved in the name of Jesus. Also, hell is a place where there's worms. And they don't die. They just keep growing and growing and all over you. And you're burning and you're burning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, is hell real? Yes, it is. Am I going there? No, I'm not. Thank God. Because I have the seal of the Holy Spirit. And I'm teaching you the word of God. And I'm also walking in holy in the name of Jesus through the Proverbs and Psalms. So, I am listening to God through the Bible. That's why I'm not going to hell. And people that live in the world that uh, drink, smoke, fornication, sex, are liars, um, have hatred, have vengeful, have lust thoughts and everything, they're not going with God because they need to humiliate and give up all the world desires. All People who worship the money, not going with God because their, their God is money. So the ones that go with God are the ones that surrender, surrender their body, their mind, their soul. They surrender their desires, their possessions. They give up everything for God. They want to walk with God because God is all-powerful and almighty. He is the one that's going to protect you in these final days. He is the one that's going to protect you from the coronavirus. He is going to protect you. You know what this um, coronavirus is? The seven years of tribulation. These are the seven years that the world will receive disasters, sufferings and sufferings and killings and killings and killings. Why? Because God is angry. God doesn't want witchcraft. God doesn't want homosexuality. God doesn't want science. God doesn't want none of these things and doesn't want fake churches. He wants you to surrender to God, give Him the authority, and He'll control you, protect you, love you, and you'll be safe. When you know the truth in the Bible, all you have to do in this time is read the Bible and read the Bible and read the Bible and ask God, talk to God, have a relationship with God. So when you talk to God, you start talking to God and God starts giving you his answers through your mind, through vision, prophecy, in prayer, many ways. But you have to surrender. You can't play with God because God's going to know and then you're going to hell. You will go to hell if you're a homosexual. You're going to get hell if you don't want to give up being a homosexual. Now, if you're a homosexual, 
or a lesbian or a transvestite or whatever you want to be and you don't surrender then you're going to hell but if you are gay and you give back your life to God and the gayness goes away in the name of Jesus you'll be safe because Jesus Christ yes there's a there's a saying Jesus Christ was friends with sinners right and gay people are sinners right but the thing is being a sinner or giving God the authority to take the sin away you have to think about that do you live with the sin or do you let God do the almighty power and save you God's the one that's going to protect you in these final days the president the antichrist the new world religion the pope none of them are going to protect you because none of them have the holy spirit the holy spirit is the power of god and we're going to read something in the name of jesus that it talks about um ephesians ephesians chapter one and we're going to talk about something very powerful that when you receive the holy spirit it changes you in the name of jesus it changes you completely because God is the one that's in control of your life. God is changing you in the name of Jesus. There's so many powerful things are happening. And it talks about this. Verse 13. And in him you are trusted and you heard the word of the truth. I'm teaching you the word of truth. The gospel of salvation, Jesus Christ. In whom you have believed. If you believe in this, look what it says. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So once you're sealed, do you know what that means? That means you're part of God. That means you don't go to hell. That means you're not going back to the world. You're saved. You're saved. God says, these are my people in the name of Jesus. These are my people. I am here for them. So when God comes for the rapture, you leave with him because you believe in the Holy Spirit. You, once you believe in the Holy Spirit, then you have to acknowledge about the Holy Spirit, meaning you have to let God start touching your heart. You have to humiliate. You have to pray. You have to glorify. You have to tell everybody about it. Why do you have to tell everybody about it? Think about it. If you're saved, right? Don't you want to save your mom, your dad, your cousins, your brothers, your sons, your family? Because they're not going to be saved by themselves. You need to save them. You need to create a ministry to your family. And then once you create the ministry to your family, then you create your friends because you don't want your friends to die either. Then from your friends, then you have then the word of God starts revealing and changing you. And if you feel like you want to keep preaching the word of God to the world in the name of Jesus, then you do. Because that's called love your neighbor as yourself in the name of Jesus. See, God gives us two important commandments. And the most important commandment is this. Love God with all your might, heart, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning, forgive them. Love them. Save them in the name of Jesus. And then once you receive the Holy Spirit, the most powerful thing happens in your life in the name of Jesus. And what happens is that you receive like superpowers. Very superpowers. Spiritual powers in the name of Jesus. So we read 1 John chapter 2 verse 27 in the name of Jesus and it says but the anointing that you have received from him binds you and you do not need anyone to teach you the same te the anointing teachings are concerning all things and are true and is not a lie and all you just been taught by by him by him means the Holy Spirit so you're learning the Holy Spirit is teaching you the Holy Spirit is teaching you truth not lies and the Holy Spirit is anointing you meaning he saved you he protect you in the name of Jesus and this is the reason why in the name of Jesus, hell is real. Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in hell. They're not going to be saved in the name of Jesus because they don't know the truth in the name of Jesus. Two. Three, it's not imaginary. Four, you already know what people are going there. And if you have the seal of the Holy Spirit, the day of rapture in the name of Jesus, which is coming, that is when God comes for his church and comes for everybody who is clean, who gave their life to God. That's what it means. You have to reborn again, have faith in God, and have the seal of the Holy Spirit. You have to believe in Jesus Christ, believe in God, the Father, the commandments, and you need to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And give the authority to God in your life, and you will be saved in the name of Jesus. Father, a powerful and ever-living God, thank you for your preaching, your spiritual scripture in the name of Jesus that touch our heart and reveal the Holy Spirit, the truth. Everything that comes from you is your will, not mine's in the name of Jesus. And thank you, God Almighty, for being powerful and showing your mercy to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful night and God bless you guys.